Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls are doing? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Uh, here we are in our data structures tutorial where we're going to be working with the first sorting algorithm called bubble sort. Now, I'm going to be um, making these videos a little here and there, so it depends on what you want to learn. Uh, it's not really a playlist in that sense where I do everything in order. So I'm going to do a few data structures here and there uh, depending on how I feel. Uh, in the moment but uh, let me just start off with the sorting algorithm the complexity is right here now if you're going this if you're taking this course or something it's important to know the complexity so it's really I mean it's really slow because it's n to the power of 2 where n is the number of elements uh, so the more elements the way it is exponentially slower so the curve is kind of like this it gets slower and slower and slower as many elements as there are it's not linear or anything like that it's just whoop, after after a while you can't really use it anymore at all uh, like I wrote here, speed low. Pros, it's really quick to write. It's really good if you have really, really small number of items in your array. You just want to quickly write a really quick sorting algorithm, whatever. You can do that. Uh, you can use this. Uh, the cons, yes, it's slow. Very, very basic. Not good at all for bigger arrays or performance in general. Uh, but to write it, it's really quick. So basically, let me just get started right here. What you need is since we're going to uh, make this kind of very general, we're going to make a function. So template type name t. So we need a helper function right now called swap. Now this is just going to swap element a with element b. So I'm going to show you how this works. ta reference, because we actually want to change the value of it, is with tb. So a, whatever value b has is going to be in a, whatever value a has is going to be in b. So we need to swap these. Now to explain how bubble sorting works, I can do that in words or I can just show you. You can read it about it here. Like for example, this array right here. We have several numbers. All we do is we check the, this number with this number. If it's bigger, uh, the, the first one is bigger, we're going to swap them. If not, we're going to leave them be. Then we're going to go to the next index. Check it with its brother or whatever, sibling, whatever, or neighbor. neighbor. Is it bigger? The first number, is it bigger than the other one? Yes. Okay, we'll swap them boom it's swapped right here all right we swapped them if then we'll go to 33 we'll check with 35 okay 33 is smaller than 35 we'll leave them be then we'll check 35 with 10 is it that is 35 bigger than 10 yes we'll swap them so you'll end up with this array right here now you see the problem we don't complete the sorting in one run we have to go again and again check 14 with 27 okay uh 27 with 33 all right that's fine 33 with 10 is not fine so we swap them and then we'll be in the correct place. Um, and what happened there is that we switch places with 27. Then we have to go again. And then 27 and 10 are not going to be good. So we have to swap those. Then we're going to end up with this. Then we have to swap these as well. So that's kind of how we go. But we have to go through the array all the time. So just because these are sorted, we don't leave them be. We still check them. Okay, they're done. Okay, they're done. Every run, we have to check all the numbers. So that's what is wrong with bubble sort. It has to go through the whole array for every run, no matter if they're sorted or not. So basically, it's the most useless kind of uh, sorting algorithm out there, the most basic one. So let's complete our swap thingy. So first, we'll create a temp variable that will hold the A value because A is going to be swapped with B. So A is going to become B, get the value of B. Now, if I write B equals A without doing this temp variable, what's going to happen is A has already been assigned the value of B. So B will just become whatever B was before. But if I save the old value of A, say A is 10 and B is 20, temp will become 10. This A, which is 10, will become 20 because B is 20. Uh, and B, which was 20, should become 10. So instead of writing a here, I'm going to write temp. And hopefully you got that. So that's why we need the temp variable, kind of a holding on to the old value. Uh, anyhow, um, that's completed. Now to bubble sort an array, you can do that in a function. Um, we just want to make a void bubble sort like that. We want to pass in a t array. And we want to say how many elements there are. So, uh, unsigned number of elements. We're just going to do that. Boom. 
template type type name c boom and we're gonna make an array here we're gonna use integers type name if you haven't watched my tutorial on that please go and do that it's uh, just a generic type so whatever we want to use we can use in the same function we can use strings we can use integers whatever it will work now now this is completely dependent on if string is is uh, if you can compare two strings or not so it doesn't support that you'll have to do extra for that but here we're just gonna use integers anyway so it's no big deal array of five elements um, const unsigned number of elements elements equals five we'll just do that number of elements and give it some values so the first value is gonna be 20 whatever you want here 10 30 2 6 all right that's five elements right there just randomly put in here boom and hopefully and in the end we're gonna make a for loop and say number of elements std c out this or no not this sorry so used to classes array at position i make something like that uh, or just make a new line boom and we'll get a, all the array printed out now before I bubble sort this let's just go ahead and try this out hopefully we'll get 20 10 32 6 yep just the order I wrote that in so after I bubble sort it uh, we're gonna do bubble sort array and number of elements we're gonna sort it and then we're gonna print the values out again and then we'll see what we get. Now I'm gonna make another std c out a new line, and I'm gonna write sorted in here, and another new line like this, and this is gonna be std c out unsorted, and then a new line, whatever, just like that, something like that. Anywho, and now my bubble sort function isn't going to do anything. It's just going to print out whatever it was. Now, how do we create bubble sort? Well, first of all, we need our array and everything. Then we're going to make a Boolean called sorted. And we're going to set it to true. All right. Now, the Boolean is going to control once the whole array is sorted. We'll go through it and we don't find even one problem. Then it's gonna stay sorted and then we're gonna kinda just leave it alone and break out of the for loop or in the end the while loop otherwise sorted is gonna be changed within the loop as soon as it hits some kind of error where one number is bigger than the other one and they're in the wrong order so that's why we have this boolean what we need first is a do while loop and we're gonna say sorted while it's not sorted we're gonna keep doing this and within this loop we need another for loop that goes to number of elements so we're gonna do this these are my passes right these are the passes this is one sorting pa pass so this is our one pass and these are all the passes so the first thing we're gonna do is our swap function works and we're gonna say if array at position i is uh, bigger then array at position i plus one now since we're using i plus one we can easily go beyond what the array is capable of so we're going to get an error if we don't do number of elements minus one here because as soon as we hit the last one and we try to do i plus one we're going to hit if it's five is the max four four there are five elements right four is the maximum index you can try to get now if i try to get five we're gonna get an error that's why I have to do this so it's gonna go all the way to the last one if I show it show that to you here we're not gonna index past this so this is gonna be the last uh, array I and this is gonna be the last array I plus one otherwise we're gonna try to get something here and that's not that's not right you can try both of those out and you'll see that you'll get errors so what you want to do here as soon as we find some error of course we're gonna say sorted equals false but for every pass we're gonna say sorted equals true because we'll just assume that thing is sorted every pass 
but if we find something not sorted, we'll set it to false. That means we'll go to the next pass. We need one more pass to sort this array, and so on and so on. Um, I hope you understand that. I'm trying to explain this as well as I can. Uh, but anyway, as soon as you, you find this uh, problem here, we're just going to use our swap function. Swap uh, array at position i with uh, array at position i plus 1. Boom. We're just going to swap that and we're going to keep going. So now hopefully if I run this, we'll get a big error. Uh, let me see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Here we go. I did some type of a thing here. I think I had an issue here. Maybe that will correct it. Nope. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Sort of true. Uh, no, no. See reference to function template bubble sorting being compiled. Syntax error missing before. Uh, no, it's not. No, I'm not. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Hmm. Oh, sorry. There we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That should be fine. So. Sorry about that little hiccup. Uh, what we got is the unsorted array here, and we sorted our beautiful array right here. Boom! All right. So let's let's do this. since this video is kind of short. Let's do this. Let's make a little global variable here called int number of passes. Now, number of times we check. Number of times we do a comparison. Number of comparisons, sorry. Comparisons. Now I'm going to try to remember this because we're going to use this later to check the eff effectivity of the sorting algorithm. So, number of comparisons plus plus every time we make a comparison in here. And we're going to just go ahead and print that. STD C out comparisons number of comparisons and we're just going to do that now in order to see that we'll all we have to do is run it hopefully and seven comparisons we have one two three four now it wasn't really that badly sorted i think but we have seven comparisons and that's quite a bit that's quite a bit the more elements we have if we have 10 elements and we kind of just write some more numbers here I think that's 10. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep. And we just run this again. We should have everything sorted. 30 comparisons to sort a 10 item array. It shouldn't be that much. Now, you see how this runs exponentially? What if I copy this and just have a 20 array, right? Let me change some of these to other numbers. 22, whatever. Let me just do that. Let's see how many comparisons that takes. 91 comparisons to sort a uh, 20 sized array. See how it is growing so fast? The number of comparisons you need in order to reach your goal. So that's not what we want. Now I'm going to save this and I'm going to let you play around with it. But just remember, bubble sort is very quick, but very, very, very quick to write, but very slow in, in uh, execution. In a do while loop, also you want to use the semicolon after the while, otherwise you're going to get an error, which I didn't really remember because I'm dumb. But yeah, there you go. That's bubble sort for you guys and girls. I hope this is good for your course. We're going to keep working on the other ones as we go. But thanks for watching as always. Take care. Best of luck with your studies. Keep learning. I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.